Hello and welcome to Face to Face on City TV. I am Umaru Sanda Amado. Uh, it's International Women's Day on Monday. And it's really appropriate to speak to someone whose job is to organize a women's fold in a large political party in Ghana. When I come back, I'll tell you who my guest is. My guest is a former member of parliament for Tano South. Um, he's uh, been removed since 2016. I wonder how he's been surviving in the periphery. But he's also, the, she is a woman organizer of the National Democratic Congress. Dr. Hannah Louise Abisio, you're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm blessed and protected. I like that. Blessed and God. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. We'll talk about your parliamentary bid, the failed one, the successful one. We'll talk about women organizer, the kind of role you play. But who is Hannah Louisa Bissu? Hannah Louisa Bissu. She's a village champion. Oh, okay. That's the best expression okay. of who Hannah Louisa Bissu is. Hannah Louisa Bissu is a village champion from the United States of Techimentia in the former Bonga Hafo region and today I have for region. Do you get confused by which one is which one now? I get confused. I'm not sure which one is Bono or half or uh, Actually, I or, don't. Or I fine. don't. But um, um, I must confess that I'm in love with Bronk and Ahafo. Okay. And even though we have Ahafo, Bono and Bono East, I still see the three regions as one. You know, okay. so. All right. So tell us, we're from Techimantia. Is that how it's United right? States of Techimantia. It's Techimantia. Um, the name came from um, Tachiman, actually. That's how I was told. That in the olden days, Otumfo used to send his men to Tachiman to, I think, to capture some animal or something. Mm. And any time they got to our place, they were able to hunt for whichever animal okay. that was. Okay. And so they would return back to Menshia and they would tell them that they had it at the Tachiman Quentia. Oh. Okay. So it's Quintia. Quint is a road. Yeah. Tia is short. So short road. That is how. So you are a Bono or you are an Ashanti? You see, I used to think that, you know, I was an Ashanti Miss Bono until 2012 when I was contesting um, the parliamentary um, seat for the first time. And I heard them calling me Donko, slave. And the whole thing was, okay, you are sucking a royal for a slave to, to come. And my dad was a chief. I know so much about my mother's side because my granddad, you know, they have some roots in Duyang Kwanta and then the chief Tansi and then also at Isaso. Essential is on the way to present for some time. But I didn't know much about my moms. So I went to ask my elders, why are they calling me a slave? That was when I was told that I'm the descendant of a Dagaba slave. I was a beautiful Dagaba young woman. Dagaba from Upper West? From Upper West, Dafiama to be precise. Okay. And there was a rich cocoa farmer who went all the way up to the firma to look for a slave. And he bought my, that's the mother of my great grandma, that she was very fair and with a lot of hair, you know, very hairy woman. And she was brought down to Techimentia. But her slave master saw that beautiful young Dagaba woman from the firma and said, why would I keep her as a slave if I can have her as a wife? So he honorably married her. And so she gave birth to my great grandma. Okay. And then, of course, it so will tell you that I'm the fifth generation, and of course, a proud fifth generation of a Dagava slave. Oh, okay. And from the day I found out that I'm uh, the, the descendant of a Dagava slave, I've never looked back. I've always been wanting to go back home one day. 
and I know that I will. So the people of Dafiama should be looking forward to seeing you. Definitely. You know, the Pramon chief, when we were going around with President Mahama, mm. he promised, he said, I should come back home. Mm. I'll go home. Mm. I'll see. go home. Okay. When did you get introduced to Ghana politics? Because you were not here with the PNDC and the LENDC, were you? But I'm, but I'm, a product, I'm a product. I'm a product of the PNDC and DC. Okay, you're close to the role. You were close to the Rawlinses, but you were not working for the PNDC, were you? No, because I was just a little girl. Okay, I was just I was just a baby. But when I say baby, I saw it. Not that I didn't see it. And so I went to Cuba. You know, at okay, a Cuba very, trained. I'm a fully. Cuban trained woman, fool. As in the one they do where they send uh, secondary school graduates to go and become medical doctors? No, 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 no. I went, I mean, I, I keep telling people that when I was living for Cuba, I was a man, a boy, and I came back as a woman because, you know, flat here, flat at the back, oh. and then down cut, and you're walking like. <laughs> A statue, you know the way they And now there's up. a lot of shape to And of course, you. after I came, you know, when I'm from far, you know, it's a woman coming. Yeah. But those days, I needed to get closer for you to know there's actually a girl. Oh, so, you went, I said, so you went for basic school and all of that? Yes, yes, yes. I was mean, it a government program? Or it was a government program for underprivileged families. Mm -hmm. and PNDC? Course, or yeah, NDC? it was under PNDC. The first program was 83 and then... It went through up to, I think, 1989 was the last batch of the little ones. Oh, you know. so you were not the only one who went? No, we, we had a little bit over 2,000. So each year, how many would go? It, it was... Your batch, how many were you My going? batch, we were 124, but... 124? Yeah, then, only girls or girls and boys? No, girls only 24. Four to, 24 girls, the rest were all boys. Yes, and, and to surprise you to know that after a badge, the three other badges that came, they were um, only only guys. Wow. So this was a government scholarship for it was a government. It was a government scholarship, you know, an agreement between the Cuban and the Ghanaian government. Yeah. So you went there, studied from scratch. You you speak studied from no, I think in Spanish. Right now we are speaking English, but trust me, it has to come in Spanish up here before you know. So you speak good Spanish. Say something to me in Spanish. Say something like uh, Omar, I like your show. I like to watch your TV station. Omar, me gusta su programa. Me gusta ver su estación. Si, si, si. Si means yes, right in Spanish. Si significa yes. Okay. Caro. Y tú me encantas. Caro, Caro. I don't know. Claro. What oh, Claro. Okay, sure. okay, that's fine. <laughs> so you came back to Ghana politics when? Or when did you come back to Ghana? I came back home 2001, actually. You came back with a certificate as what? Medical doctor? No, as a veterinary surgeon. Veterinary surgeon. Yeah. Okay. All right. I came back home as a veterinary surgeon. But, you know, back in Cuba, we were brought up in a different way. And so if you ask me when did I come into politics, I get confused. Because I think that um, the world is politics. Even in our homes, we do politics. The fact that you don't give it a name as politics, we do. When it comes to even siblings, sometimes you compete among ourselves and we strive to do better than the other. You know, parents, whether they like it or not, some, sometimes they have some level of favoritism towards one child mm -hmm. or the other. Mm -hmm. Fathers and mothers are divided. You know, this one has so much affection for one child or the other. And so politics, you know, exist at all levels of our lives. And Cuba, as uh, a country, at the time was under serious... Uh, I wouldn't say under... I, it, it, there was serious tension between Cuba and the United States. And when we went, we went through you know, training, it wasn't for military training as it was um, perceived. Because that time, um, the, the UP MPP, the whole propaganda was that we were sent there to be trained as military officers oh, and what have you. Were you, were you children of NDC cadets? Not, not at all. it was a government scholarship that was It was, was government scholarship. And it will surprise you to know 
that from 92, after, you know, the political parties were formed, some parents brought, sent NPP teachers to their, to their wards in Cuba. And so it wasn't about PNDC, UNDC. We had to go through some um, examinations. You spent you 20 passed. years there? No, I spent 14. 14 years. Mm -hmm. that, that is the average for all of us. I mean, we grew up together. And if you ask me today, my first family is a Cuban train. We understand ourselves better. We, we grew up loving ourselves. We grew up helping ourselves, supporting each other. So you had parents who could not afford your education? It wasn't that. It's just like any scholarship. But of course, I would say that um, the vast majority of us probably wouldn't have been where we are mm. today, mm. but for that program. When you, you came know. back in 2000, by then NDC had one. lost... 2001, yeah. by then NDC had lost power. Mm -hmm. So what did you come to do? You joined the NDC straight away? I mean, once I was in Cuba, I remember we used to pay dues to the 31st December Women's Movement. Okay. We had our little books. And, um, of course, not to the NDC, but that time when we had the 31st December Women's Movement. And we were politically alert. We were trained to love our country. We were trained to believe in what we believe in and stand for it. We are trained to fight for the right thing to be done. We are trained to be principled. We are trained to be people of conviction. And so for some of us, the NDC ways were more similar to our upbringing. And so we decided, you know, from that time. I, I was, I've been a school prefect, I mean, girls prefect. I've been vice president SRC. I've been Vice President Diwa LG Democratic Youth League of Ghana. And so I've been in that leadership. I, I was in the cadet, cadet Corps in Cuba. And of course... So you're a militia? No, not really. Not mm. really. Not really. But you see, Cuba trained us. They said that, look, the first um, point of defense is yourself. And so we were given initial military preparation. Not because we were going out there for war, but... They were, they were teaching us how to defend ourselves, mm. should in case mm. the enemy comes and then you are not able, I mean, you would not have the military at all times. Okay. So you are taught how defend to... Defend yourself. Yeah, defend yourself. You came back in the year 2000. Uh, one. one. I don't know, I keep saying that. You be returned as a veterinary officer. There's this story I hear about you that... You came back and you were the veterinary officer for Dr. Jerry Rollins' dogs, and you killed his dogs and he sacked you <laughs> from his house. Is that what happened? I'm sorry to laugh. I mean, and, and I think I apologize to your viewers. Um, in the first place, I came back as a veterinary surgeon, and I have pride, I take pride in my profession. I did vet because I have a lot of compassion. You need to have extra compassion to be a vet. You have to feel for the animal, feel their pain, for you to take the pain in treating them. And so, um, mommy and daddy, that's how I've always called them. You know. So you mean Nana Kunido Ajiman Rollins yes, and Jerry yeah, John Rollins? Yes, exactly. I, I would say that it's a propaganda because I know that, and may daddy's um, dental soap continue to rest in paradise. I will say that mommy is alive, and they know that if they're here, I think they will laugh at it. You see, yes, I was, as their daughter, and a veterinary surgeon, there was no one in a better position to take care of your parents' pets. And they had probably 20 or a little bit more dogs. 20 yeah, because you see... All at Ridge or somewhere else? Yeah, no, at Ridge, at Ridge. Wow, in addition to the soldiers? No, you see, Daddy loved, he loves pets, and then Mommy also does. And usually if, you know, the, the, the pet, the dogs, you know, give birth, if he gave you a, a dog, <laughs> don't think that he would just close his eyes. You follow up to see if you are treating the animal oh, well. Wow. And so he kept them. So it wasn't like you know, that were buying them, but they were reproducing. In and the house. E exactly so. So I was in charge of, of, of them, and except 
the medications that were bought. I mean, I did it with a lot of love and pride. So you, and so, you did it include feeding them or that's for the caretakers? Oh, no, so that's you, for the caretakers. So you took care My of their health? My own was to make sure that they had their vaccinations, let's say parvovirus, antirabies, and what have you, everything in place, the women, if... With 20 dogs, I'm not sure you went for any other job. That would be your full-time job. Oh, no, you? not at all. If I was going there, probably I'll spend hours, then I'm done. But it's not every day then, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the caretakers too were trained mm -hmm. to also handle mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And so there was a time that um, mommy informed me that that at that time I was living in Tema. So that he said... Um, I should hand over the, the, the care of the dogs to one doctor, Tete, at 37. And I'm sure that anybody who goes around 37, there's a veterinary clinic and Dr. Tete. I've not heard from him in a long while, so I'm sure that he, he will know what I'm saying. And so I actually handed everything over to Dr. Tete. I mean, to mommy, to give in to Dr. Tete. And at one point, um, Daddy was asking if now they were taking good care of the dogs. I said, okay, it's Dr. Tete. So he wanted to find out who that's okay. Mommy said, you know, so he's been handed over to Dr. Tete. Then he said, okay, no problem, we handle that. And that was it. It was once I was sleeping at around midnight, and I heard this knocking on my gate. I went out and it was Agbeko. That was the driver of daddy. Agbeko. Agbeko. And he came, he was carrying the one of the great dings. That's a dog. A dog. Very huge. They can get to about 85 kilos. You know? wow. It's a very huge, beautiful dog. He was carrying it? In the arms. Okay. It, was, it was almost there. Then I came there and said, dog, um, old man says, you know, I should bring the dog. When I get it, I should call you. And by then, they were out of the country. And he spoke with me on Abiko's phone and said, Hannah, um, please help with the dog, you know, just take care of it. When I come, when we come back, we sort everything out. So you just forget about everything and take care of it. Then I realized it had parvovirus, and it was very, very weak. The stage with that digested blood, um, I knew it was going to be difficult for it to survive, but not until it gives out the last breath, you can leave it. So I went, ran and got some infusions, and I think I gave, you know, about two, and I asked that she go. Then I called my colleague, Dr. Edna Kisi, because I found out from Agbeko, immediately I realized, I said, no, then they must be losing dogs. So I found out from Agbeko, I said, is she the only one? Then he said, no, they've lost, I think, about three or four already. Then I said, okay, have you reported to Dr. Tete? Because I had now handed over a long time to Dr. Tete. Then he said, yeah, Dr. Tete came, but, you know, that's why the old man says you should bring it to me. I said, okay. So I called my colleague, Dr. Edna Kisi. And the next day, it was a Saturday, so the Sunday, she went and opened, we took the dog, definitely it died. But I went in into the house and got the whole place disinfected and went again to Ajarangano because the caretakers were moving in from Rage, they were, they were commuting between Rage and Ajarangano. It means that if you step in any of those droppings and you took it to Ajarangano, it was going to also get those animals. It's highly, highly, highly contagious, and it's about 99% fatal. I mean, when it gets them, it's difficult to, you know. So I went from, did all the disinfection, and did everything, and checked their vaccination records, and, you know, tried to... So that dog died? It died. Others died. But it wasn't because of it was... You didn't kill them? No, please. It was under the care of Dr. Tete. So how come you were fired for, no, for actually, the death of dogs? No, that no it wasn't because in fact, after I stabilized the situation, I called in my colleague, Dr. Edna, because for whatever reason, the mommy said which I should hand over the, the care of the dogs to Dr. Dr. Tete. Tete. 
the time I was in church, we didn't have that situation. Dr. Tete came and there was the, all these, I think we lost about seven, eight dogs. So the death of these dogs is not what led to the... No, I, at that time I wasn't in charge of the dogs. It was Dr. Edna. In fact, after that, daddy invited me to come and work with him in his office. So, as a what? I mean, as, as one of his eight, one of the office that this time. This would be which year? I Before think, 205, after 205? No, it was, this was probably 207, getting to 208. Oh, before the elections? It was before the elections. And the and dogs had died when? No, they died, uh, no, they had died before. Okay. okay. And I went in, okay. I mean, I went, my memory, it, it should be between two, 207, 208. Okay. Okay, because the time that I left the office, I had gone on a campaign tour with Daddy in the Ashanti region. Okay. And I came back because there was nobody. So the fact that the dogs died, you were not, not under your care. And no, no, they were under Dr. Tete. That's, that's what I've mentioned. I've mentioned okay. Agbeko. Yes, so that's not I've mentioned Dr. Ed, and I've mm. mentioned Dr. Tete. And so and it was alive. under the care of Dr. Tete. Okay. You know, and okay. the records are there to show, unless somebody wants to play mischief. Okay. But um, I'm sure that truth, truth is one. Lies, there are many. This is face to face, uh, where there's only one truth here. My name is Umaru Sandama. My guest is Dr. Hannah Louise Ambisi. She's National Women Organizer of the NDC. She did not kill the NDC founders' dogs. That's what she just said. According to the rumors flying around, that's what the issue is. She just said the record straight, at least from her perspective. When we come back, we'll talk about her organizational skills and how come the women didn't turn up in their numbers to vote for the NDC on two occasions. They lost in 2016 lost in 2020. She herself has lost her own constituency. Stay with us. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast. And sometimes it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Facts Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 p.m. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. I am Umaru Sandamudu and my guest is the national organizer of the NDC, Dr. Hannah Louisa Bissu. The founder of the NDC is no more. The NDC has lost elections on two consecutive occasions. Are you really a formidable force or we should start trusting PNC more than NDC? <laughs> we are a formidable force. We are. And our founder uh, in his last years, uh, did not uh, delink a bit of his romantic relationship with the party so that we can grow. You know, when you have, a, when a bird hatches, first, you know, the, the little ones are in feathers. And when they want them to learn how to fly, they go removing the feathers one by one. So when the nest becomes so uncomfortable, those little ones will now learn to fly because now where they are we so uncomfortable so that one day if the mom should fly out and never comes back because she meets you and ends up with the catapult in the forest. yes and ends up in my sister-in-law's <laughs> pot, pot. <laughs> then they can fly out by themselves okay and so um I think this is a formidable party, and this is a very strong party. Um, I sit here and I don't believe that we lost the 2020 elections. You don't? No. Jean Mensah said you lost. Justice Christine Yeboah, with his six other colleagues, said you lost. That's two loses. You see, uh, Jean Mensah, unless we those who want to turn our eyes towards the other side. It's obvious that she is an appointee of the MPP and not a neutral person. 
she cannot say that she worked with her own conviction. She herself does not even believe in what she did and what she said. Ask me why. The why is the reason why. Hmm? The why hmm. is the reason why she ran faster than Usain Bolt when she was asked to take the witness bus. I would have taken the witness bus. I would have explained to the people of Ghana and the world that yes, this is me and this is what I did. This is where I came from. That's where we got to and this is what happened. Why did she run? Why was she so overly protected? Because she didn't call out numbers that belonged to her. In my, in my view, from what I saw, okay? And so um, what happened in 2020 was legalization of armed robbery. Who is an armed robber? An armed robber is a person who will take a gun pointed at you either to kill you or frighten you or a knife or cutlass or any arm to probably do away with your tablet or your shoes or your beautiful suit. And so if you rob me at gunpoint and take my vote away or take um, um, the will of the people, that the only power we have as a people that's through the tongue and you turn our will from where we wanted it to go to another place and it's accepted it's legalization of armed robbery but the analogy of the armed robbery if you go to the court after arresting the armed robber you are asked please tell us what and what this gentleman stole from you you should be able to list he stole my shoes he took my earrings and all of that you went to court you were asked if you said she really stole from you, what did she steal from you? Give us hard numbers. You couldn't mention one. No. Um, you see, we went to court. You can enter my house and you steal so many things. You have them in your possession. Okay? You've been caught. I've gone to court. I saw you jump in my wall. I have evidence when you were shooting and killing my security people or my household, I have all those evidence. It comes, and then you ask, okay, tell me A, Y, Z. Then I'm also saying, okay, the things you have in your hands, in this case, bring them to bear. The armed robbery that I'm talking about is that whatever was done, was done under intimidation, under the killings and maimings of Ghanaians. That was what was done. That is armed robbery. But does that so, reflect in the numbers? Because in the polls, the... Yeah, it was in the polls. No, it was in the, the polls. And they said that you lost. No, you... you, 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 you of see, 10, 50 plus of the vote. No, why didn't she... The, what, you having how brought, many, but yeah. having brought a contrary no, fact. How many times did she change the results? Does it matter? It, it matters. You corrected it your, your, no, it your, your, no, your, it your statements. It matters. Court. She has the figures. She is the only returning officer. Yeah. If I feel cheated... If I feel cheated, you are the returning officer. I'm saying you, you robbed me. But she, she has gazetted some results. Yeah. No, gazetted. the results, yeah, the results she gazetted is what we are also contesting. She gazetted results, she went and changed the results. And as a matter of fact, I think that under this government, we need to then do away with what is called coalition. Allow the Minister for Electoral Commission, Jane Mensah, to sit in the annex office of the president and decide with him the figures she should put. That's not what happened. No, I'm... Um, she sat in the office with your colleague in the national executive. No, oh, he's not even no, when she, no, when she was... She sat with no, your friend... When she was changing the figures, remember. when she was changing the figures... Your friend was drinking no, tea. No, when she was changing the figures, where were they? As a matter of fact, he wasn't the only one who was offered tea. So we shouldn't let, let it look like... Yeah, but... Jane Mensa herself drank tea. Yeah, but on a serious day biscuit. that NDC people are hopeful that you would Yeah, on a serious day that Jane Mensa probably was also robbing us. She also drank tea. Yeah, but she offered the and tea. And everybody... Yes, everybody around there took tea. How do you trust someone who you've called an enemy since before the election and take their tea and drink when you're there busily working and you turn around and say you've been stolen when you actually accepted well, a Trojan horse. No, 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 no. That we've been stolen, yes, we are. We, we were stolen. We mm. were robbed. Because you, you were not we vigilant. Were robbed. We were robbed right from the polling centers. Because you were not we were, vigilant? No, we were vigilant, but we cannot be vigilant against the gun, the bullets. You know, you... No, when Ballot was taken with a gun, was he? What happened at Tichiman? 
But that's just one no, case. It doesn't no, reflect no, no, on the picture, case. does it? No, no, it, it does. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. A lot happened in Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. Where you have... So how can you also explain, okay? Where you have probably about 300,000 people voting only presidential mm -hmm. and not parliamentary. But people could choose skirt and blouse. No, no. You see, we need to face the fat sweeter. We need to. You see, as a nation, what we are heading, if, if, if not we are, I think we are already there. Mm. Where we are right now, we are in a ditch. And we are closing our eyes. We are pretending not to be seeing the truth. You see, when it happens, as it's happening, it's not going to affect NDC. You see, the democracy of this country is dead and gone. You say that the Are truth. you sure you're speaking your mind? The media is operating. You are allowed to go on a demonstration unless, of course, <laughs> it's going to affect the You don't even believe in the media is operating. Under John Dramani Mahama, mm -hmm. did you see the kind of things that you, the media, you suffer these days? Can you speak freely your mind for real? Did no. you no? Did you see that recently? What came out up to the media? What came out? Eh? What Recently, came, what uh, came out to the media? What came out? Hmm? What came out? Recently, you, you were, I think there was a communication that it's not everything that you can talk about. Where's your freedom? You don't have that freedom. And you know that there are things that we don't have. Um, uh, look at Ameswali. Mm. Anas. Uh, uh, what's Anas? Mm. Today, Anas, where is he? He's around. He's been doing No, Anas. No, 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 no. They bastardize Anas. Have they? Anas has, yes, Anas has a very strong will. He did, he did a report. He did a report on has COVID. A strong on COVID. That collapse mm. because of what they did to him. To the nurse is a demon. Let's go back to okay. the election results. NDC has said, and listen to this analogy. You have said that you have been cheated. You should have now been said caught. We've been robbed. You see, cheating. Fine. Cheating is one thing. Okay. You can cheat on your wife. Fine. You've it's been, not robbery. You've been robbed. Yes. So you said. You went to court. You didn't provide any alternative figures. In 2016, the NDC's coalition system collapsed. You did not have results. At least that's a criticism against you. I haven't seen a parallel tabulated result from the NDC. The MPP, as of 1 a.m. on election night, came out and made an anal analysis and a statement and said they had won by unrigable margins. In 2020, the same thing seemed to have happened. We do not have a counter result from the NDC. You're only challenging the declaration which was corrected how can you convince your party supporters except what, if you're trying what, to let them know what are the them? basis of the correction where did she correct those, the, the declaration hmm. what was the mistake in the first declaration why didn't she come out you see when i said the arm so robbery, that's all you no, wanted to no, know no 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 that's all, because she, supposing that we came out with a figure she has her own figures hmm. and they come out who would believe her own she has no she has original pink sheets and you have carbon copy. There are, no there are places where there are two uh um, pink sheets mm -hmm. for the same collision center so bring your and carbon so, so, copy no no so we what we are saying is that ec ec should give us uh what she has and to explain come in the box for us to ask questions to clear our minds you see i'm not i'm not i'm not a lawyer and I'm not trying to even be one. Mm -hmm. But what made the EC to run away from the truth? What made the EC to run away from the truth? First, when they wanted to, they, I think they found something, then now, okay, you cannot uh, wait. Mm -hmm. When it, it's time for cross-examination, she will come. Then cross-examination, you did everything possible for her not to get into the box. If she believes in what she did, if she believes that she was not maneuvered, she was not manipulated, she was not politically enslaved in her mind to do what she did, why did she jump in the box? If you really had facts to support your claim, you would have brought 38,000 plus carbon copies of pink sheets no, that we were do, signed no, we by do, your agents. No, we do, we do in have, fact, no, you we even do have, have your agents at the headquarters signing of Rojo Metonun and Dr. Kwesa White have signed off on some of the results that were declared why would you turn around and Some say that the results, results that you authenticated no we didn't say all the results yes. i asked a question and you had a very simple answer to it you see before when they were printing the ballots mm. do you remember we found out that they were in a room a separate printing press 
uh, uh, is it a pre uh, assembly? Is it assembly? Assembly president. Assembly is a state, is a state owned public. Exactly. Company. No, but who, who is in charge? It's run by a political appointee appointed good, by good, the president, good, but good. that's always been no, the no, case. No, 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 An assembly press we're told yes, has so, been printing ballots. Yes, since so, so so I'm going to I'm going to say this to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. When when I think he's somebody who even ever contested primaries of MPP. Yes, he okay, did. Good. It's gone. Yeah. I don't think that if you should put an abyss in charge of assembly press tomorrow. When the NDC is in power, you guys will even not rise up against it. But during that printing, when they had all agreed to do all the ballot printing in one place, where all the agents were, we found out that they were in another, at another location printing only presidential ballots. Printing only presidential ballots. There were other instances during the elections where we chance on Tom printed presidential ballots that it, you know, so there were issues. So when I, we ask the question, how come, how come that about 300,000 and over people voted only presidential? And so if you ask that we should bring pin sheets, let me tell you one thing. If I had my own way, I would say let's put the pin sheets aside. Let's, let, let, let's audit ballot box by ballot box. You let's could have tally done them. That. Oh yes, let's tally them. No, let's tally them. Mm -hmm. Let's tally them. Okay. Again, against what? You would have found foreign materials. You would have found ballot papers that do not tally with the machines. That do not tally with the booklets that came to the polling centers. You could have done that in the court. You didn't go on that route. You decided. No, they, they to... present, look, I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I think the lawyers presented a very good case. Did it? Okay. It, yes, they did. It lost yes, throughout. They did. It was seven yes. zero No, throughout. definitely. What do you expect? Let me tell you a story. Mm. When we were in school, it, the the junior high was only Ghanaians. The Sudanese rep wanted his daughter to school with Ghanaians. They brought her. He didn't want any Sudanese to come there. I was the girl's preferred by then. A Sudanese lady came. This in Cuba. Yeah, this is Cuba. Came and visited. I wanted her to go. We got into a fight. The house mistress, who was a Ghanaian, called the two of us. Of course, I reported. This girl could not speak English nor understand English. She couldn't speak Chi. The Ghanaian mistress could only speak Chi in English, zero Spanish. So I had to do the translation from the Sudanese girl to the Ghanaian mistress, and from the Ghanaian mistress to the Sudanese girl. I remember that I have the problem with this young lady. And you see, we have been trained to be free when we talk. So we gesture. Ghanaians are used to putting our hands at our back. So this girl who we had pushed around in the girls' dormitory was so emotional and she was speaking Spanish. And if you speak Spanish and you speak really fast, okay? So, so then our mistress was like, Do you know what What's she saying? I said, oh, she says if you misbehave, she will slap you. <laughs> and before the girl could realize, she was slapped by the, head, by the um, house mistress. Based on your translation. Exactly. So I'm coming to this. Then the girl was alarmed. Say, por qué? Por qué? Que yo hice? Por qué? Like, why? Why? What did I do? And she was throwing her hands. I said, I said, what? I said. So she was talking and pointing at me and pointing at her. Then I said, she said she will land you with another a slap back. <laughs> and then our house mistress slapped her again. So the girl realized at that point she had no option than to run. She only got to find out when we met in the university and I told her what happened. You see, when you carry a case to the friend or to, 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 to a home where you, you don't have a say or... or who decides the case does not depend on you. Please. They are independent judges. I don't want to talk about the judges. I'm a street lawyer. What I'm saying is that the verdict, what it tells me in every Ghanaian who really wants to see that democracy has been killed under President Anado's government, that today in Ghana, don't just get up and say you are going to vote because you believe that you are going to cause a change. It's not about who went. It's not about how we voted. It's not about the democracy that we all believe in. 
It's about the strongest. It's about the one who can provide the security and then kill people that you've seen 14 years, women, men, kill them. It's about who can bully with the national security. It's about the strongest person. And so you know what? I would rather build my muscles because I know that the democracy in Ghana, you need to fight for it. So you're, I know, yeah, you're it, going to be physical in the next election? Well, it, they were physical. So you're going to do no, that? No, the, the government was physical. If you're a thief and you come into my home and you rob me at gunpoint, you think I'll sit down for you to come back through the same way the next time to come and rob me? And it's a proverb, okay? And you see, it's a kwasianity and a grasa. When the fool becomes wise, now you cannot cheat them. You have anymore. become wise. Be oh, yes. Because we believed. You see, when they were training um, 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 vigilantes, we were training attorneys, we were training our doctors, we were yes, training yes. our professionals. You were sending lawyers see, to the police station. Yeah, exactly. But they were sending guns. So it was Jimmy? They were, no, I wouldn't say Jimmy. No, it's a proverb. It wasn't Jimmy. Okay. We believed. We, you see, we are true Democrats. So you were going through the process. So what are you going to do differently? The you say? What are you going to do differently next time? Well, I, I think you also we, are, we, we, are, we are wiser. So you train vigilantes? All, what, we know, what we know is that I wouldn't say we train vigilantes or not. The only thing that I know is that me, I know that when I'm going to a polling center under President Anado. You carry a gun? If, if I can carry a gun, yes, but I'll not carry a gun. But what I'm saying is I know that it, it's not just the card. Are you sure it's not because you national executives were simply incompetent? Your candidate was not sellable. That's why you lost the election. And Everybody you knows our behind. candidate was more sellable. After he brought out his manifesto, the party's manifesto, where, where, did, where we discussing any other manifesto in this country? Were we discussing it? No. You see, we should face the truth. Today, everybody is quiet. Everybody is quiet. And, and there's a saying that in a society of so much injustice, Silence becomes a crime. You see, we are all supporting a level of silence that is so loud. And it's a crime because there's so much injustice. Tomorrow, today will hunt us tomorrow. And let nobody speak when it hunts. When we say these things, people think, oh, how, you see, why will you say there is peace? Because you, you, you shot at me, you've beaten me, you've oppressed me, that my anthem says I should resist you. And I refuse to obey the national anthem that is always played before the president speaks. Then there's peace. That is fake. That is hypocritical. I think that we should start facing the truth. We should start analyzing, dissecting what happened in 2020. Let's face the fact. Nobody, even Jemensa herself, she knows that she has been manipulated. She should have jumped in there. She should come out today. The court is over. She should come and tell us her story. Why is she running away from her own figures? We are doubting what she said. So why is she not coming out, okay? I sat here and you asked me about the daddy's dogs and what have you. I didn't run away from it because I know what I did and I know the truth. So you defended it? I'll defend it. This is Face to Face on City TV. Dr. Hannah Luisa Bissi is my guest. She's a women organizer of the NDC. When we come back, she doesn't trust the system as much, but she's in court contesting the Town of South elections. Would she just abandon that ship and move on with her life? Stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. You're welcome back to Face to Face. Let's conclude the interview with Dr. Hannah Luisa Bisi, former member of Parliament and National Women Organizer of the NDC. You went to Parliament, served for one term. And then the people just rejected you two times. Now you are in court. You don't trust the legal system. You don't trust the electoral system. Why are you still in court? OK. Let me start with this. The people didn't reject me. They didn't? No. 22,000 votes against 19,000. 
the people didn't reject me. And also, when you talk about trusting the system and not trusting, when people were beaten, shot, and men at our hours, we were gone. Okay. I was beaten also. I just didn't go to the commission. People went to the commission to prove a case. I bet you that we knew that whatever the commission was going to come out with was going to be bastardized by the government. And so today we don't have justice for the victims, even though we have all the video evidence versus President Nanado's government, led MPP government for you. And so the fact that um, you went to one place or the fact that some military officers or police officers will be the unlawful and do the unlawful and take lives does not mean that all police officers or all military officers will do the same. So the fact that we've gone somewhere doesn't mean and we're unhappy with the verdict does not mean that all the eight constituencies that we are contesting we are going to back off from it. No, we are not in the Supreme Court. People voted. My constituents, we had zero coalition. My constituents, there was no coalition at all. Um, after the elections, whilst I think sorting and counting was going on, the lies went up. The lies came after eight, and by then all the ballot boxes had been moved to the police stations. At one point, for instance, it was only the MPP swear that there wasn't even a single police officer. From there, they moved the ballot, the uh, BVD machines, everything straight to the Electoral Commission's office, not to the coalition center. We went to work and we massed up there. The military came and they started shooting. At one point, I went and told the commander that you shoot me. Then I said, Madam, we've not gotten to that. I said, no, you, but your guys are shooting, so shoot me. Once you shoot the leader, there will be no reason to shoot at any other person. And I'm the one who is on the ballot. John Draman Mahama is not here to defend himself. So I stand in for him. So if you are going to shoot and shoot an innocent person, then here I am as a leader. Shoot me. So if you can't shoot me, stop shooting at them. Because we are not armed. Why will you pack ballot boxes and everything straight? To the to the um, to the uh, electoral commission electoral office. commission office. Then they started picking up their bullets. We went to the collation center. The electoral commission officers said they were doing administrative work. We had seen figures on the pink sheets that did not reflect what happened at the polling centers. And in fact, our agents were already massing up. But our place was heavily militarized, heavy. And so we sat there waiting. And I remember when I was talking to Daru, he said talking to him is even distracting him. And we were all in a hurry. So when they finished, we started projecting. I said, OK, where are the ballot boxes? Why don't you bring the ballot boxes to the collection centers? Because we are going to ask for recount. Our people were denied recount at the polling centers because there was, there was no light. We now have the opportunity to recount at the collation center. Now we can't find the ballot boxes. Then he said, if you won't recount, you can't ask with your mouth. We have a lawyer, so we presented a letter. We're only waiting for collation to start. We sat in to around 7.30 a.m. And they came with some, the IZ from C, whatever. Sheet. The following day. The following day, 7.30 a.m., we were sitting down waiting. They said they were doing, they had calculators, left, right, center, moving. Were your opponents there? The, the MC was with the arrow, at the arrow stable. So this was coalition for parliamentary or presidential? Both. No, no coalition had been happening? No coalition time. happened. No so coalition after happened. After 7.30, what did they do? Oh, I, I went into the car to go and charge with them. The lawyer came and said, look, they presented... There's a uh, form that we should say, sign what? Sign what? If there's no need for collation, then we should change it 
in the electoral, we should do an electoral reformance after elections, is to go and sit in their office and do their own thing and bring your form for you to sign. So you didn't see the ballot boxes at the center? No, no it wasn't. It, it never came there. And in fact, one electoral officer the next day around, I think, eight or nine, came with four of the ballot boxes in his car to the electoral center. And our guys went on him. The police had to come and say, and of course the military started with their shooting again. And according to him, because there was no light and the rains, so he took them to his house. And so these are the things that we are talking about. If you talk about Tano South, I will tell you that, well, we didn't sign, okay? So, so, so you don't have your signature, your agents don't have your, your no, signature? No, no, no. On all the polling station sheets or just the coalition sheets? Well, I don't want to, I don't, because it's in court, so I don't want to talk too much about okay. it. That's what I'll say. That. So I can only talk about the last, whatever, the ECS administrative work paper. Okay. Because I will not call it a coalition paper. So they gave you that paper and you refused to sign? We refused. In fact, we took that paper two days after their so-called administrative work because there was no collation at all. But they went ahead and declared your opponent the winner. Well, well, they went ahead and declared so many places, you know, when they didn't do collation. They went ahead and declared results when, at, at one place when they sat everybody to go to conference center. They went ahead and, 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 and stopped declaration, changed declarations. You can go to Techman South, you can go to... You know, they went ahead and did whatever they felt like doing. So that's because, why you are in court. That's why we are so in you want, court. So you are in court asking for coalition to be done, or you want your opponent removed from parliament? You want a new well, election? Well, when we get to the court, what we pray the court, we deal with it. We've not started, so I, you know, I'm not a lawyer. The case hasn't started in court? Um, you, we have, I think, they are yet to set the date, but everything has been, you know, said. But you see, I'm not a lawyer. I'm only a pocket lawyer. So I try never to do the law thing. God knows why he made me a vet. And so... Don't let me get in there. In 2024, you have said that you would be very cautious when you go to the polling station. You will not just trust your thumb. You have to trust more than that. But before then, you need to do a lot of organization. Are you sure that you can really get your people organized, especially when some of them are disappointed in what happened in parliament? Even your colleague national officer, Sami Jemfi, is disappointed in what happened in parliament. Are you sure you would have a united NDC? We, we are united. The fact that we are pain does not mean we are not united. Do you support that statement by Sami Jeffy or you do not? Oh, I think that he's explained himself. He's a communication officer. He expressed himself. I think that when a parliamentarians fought, you know, on the 7th of January, when we saw that embarrassing coup d'etat in parliament where the military walked in and the chewing and swallowing of ballot papers by um, Carlos Ahinkra. So it's not like all the MPs in parliament voted for them. Mm -hmm. Probably, maybe even some of the MPs voted against them. But this probability so is not right. Well, don't worry. Probability cannot always be right, mm -hmm. but we still say it. The total and number so of MPP MPs in the House, if you include the one from Formina, they have 138. None of the nominees went the through one with 138 from votes. From Formina is not MPP. MPP. I'm saying that he's an independent candidate. That's what I'm saying. Unless I'm say it's cross -capital. Don't worry, he has he has not. So I'm saying that NPP has 137. If you add the Formina independent MP, that makes it 138. None of those nominees got below 140 in the votes, which oh. means that at least five of your people voted for the nominees. And in some instances, over 20. Ten, what about if 10 of them voted against and probably 10 of us? So since we are not there, we will not be able to know it's a secret ballot. And, but what so I, it means that you don't agree with Sami Jemfi that your MPs let you down? No, 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 no. Yes, they did. What I'm trying to say is that but if you cannot lump them up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because you have about 100 or more of them who did not vote that way. Okay. So we cannot just throw the baby away with, with the, the bus. With, with the he is saying that the leadership you know. is poor. Do you agree? You know, it, I mean, in, in, every, in every organization, when something happens, leadership is held accountable. Mm -hmm. Even what happened in parliament, some of our supporters are holding national accountable. But we are saying that every, every organization, in, in terms of politics, we whip. Okay? So if party, yes, party did its bit. Okay, so the rest, if I'm outside parliament, 
then you have nothing to look at under the leadership. Moving forward, what will be the relationship between national executives of the NDC and, and leadership of the NDC in parliament? Are you sure you can work together? It's the same. No, it's the same. It's, uh, the NDC, it, it, they are members of parliament. And NDC is their political party. It seems party. You, can't, you don't have control over them. No, no, that we, we are not. There are some people no, who are no, asking we, for we, them we, to be removed. Is that something you agree with? Well, I think that leadership will come up with the right decisions. I can't sit here and say something that we've not decided yet. Uh, you know, but I know that you know, leadership will take decisions. When that decision you know, is taken, I'm sure through the communication, I prefer it to be made known to you know, our supporters and Ghanaians at large. So, but to say if we can work, it's the same political party. We have not delinked at all. These are our honorable members of parliament. Yes, some of them might have gone out of the way. I'm sure that they'll probably be whipped back in line. I'm sure that the necessary measures will be taken. I'm sure that the right things will be done. So as and party so, leaders, you have not disowned Sami Jemfi for what he did, have you? Why will we disown Amar Peace? The day we disown Amar Peace, then we'll be dead in the grave. So you're with him on what he has said? Not you as a person, but you as an entire I think Sami, Sami did not bring a communication out saying, okay, this is the NDC's communication. It was a Facebook Sami, post. Yes, Sami spoke. As Sami? As Sami Jemfi. Okay? But if you look at what Sami Jemfi said, any party person would have said the same. So he spoke for him. And for the party base. And for the party base. Okay, it doesn't mean that Sami didn't say this is the official stance of the party. Okay. But I think that it's also um, 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 fair mm -hmm. to note mm -hmm. that Sami has come out to also explain himself. And you see, you, you can, you can, they whip us. I remember when in parliament, if there's something that I'm not even in agreement. You are forced to vote. Yeah, no, because you, you see, you follow a certain line. Very well. And I'm, very, I'm a very disciplinarian. So if even I don't like it, I'll tell you that, you know, just like when we were drawing from my own, so we were gone. I didn't like it. But you had to follow. Exactly, because my national chairman has spoken. We have to leave now. You've been member of parliament, you've been deputy minister. What are you hoping to do next? Running mates? Because your NDC has introduced women running mates. You see, we are the champions of champions. Uh, but you see... I uh, will run um, mate flag bearer. Will you contest John Mahama? <laughs> you, know, you know, John Mahama is my husband material. The wife is from Brung and Ahafo. Ah. We love him. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. We love him. And so we, you will we, not contest we, we are How? I mean... Would you want to be on the same ballot with him? <laughs> Then I'll be in a different political party, which I can't. No, I mean, I as mean, his running mate, if he I offers mean, you the... Oh, if he I'm says, a politician. You know what Professor Nana said, oh, she doesn't want to go it again. Will the, I think that we will leave, we will leave that, that to time. For him but to for, yeah, for, for him to decide. But for now, I wish to state that um, we are with him. Um, we, we back him when this battle together. And we, we feel his pain. His pain is the pain of the party. We all feel that we were robbed and we are not going to sit down. We will support him, support the party. We support our parliamentarians. And uh, we also hope that our parliamentarians will support the party, support the grassroots. Right. And together, we will reinforce our walls of defense okay. come 2024. Dr. Hannah Louis Abisio, thank you for coming on Face to Face. Thank you for having this Dagaba woman. But you, I know you are from Upper West. Um, I'm not sure where I'm from. You're not too sure. It's a bit complex. You're com okay, no. cut at this, cut at that. Yeah, plenty of cutters. You're in trouble. Yeah, very well. That's how we end today's edition of the show. My name is Umaru Sanda. I'm going to do stay with City TV because it's your world.